Season 13 will see the return of Captain Flameheart with his legendary flagship in tow as a world event and playable ship in Sea of Thieves, along with some other bits you might not know about it and some potential future content Rare can add to take advantage of the ship. Starting with some lesser known things, did you know that you can tackle world events with the Burning Blade? Now, we don't know if any are not included in this pool, but in the trailer you can see it sailing around the map with a skeleton fort cloud in the background, which will suggest this won't prevent world events from spawning. This makes a lot of sense, even in the world event phase. If you didn't know, the Burning Blade has two phases. The first is in the world event phase, crewed by skeletons. Then if a crew claims it, they will be able to use it as their ship. When you think of it that way, the first ship is just a bigger skeleton ship, then it's just a bigger galleon. While yes, six ships do put a strain on the server, it surely can't be that much more taxing, and when you take it over anyway, your own ship disappears. If I were to hazard a guess, they'd only spawn in when the crew has claimed it, otherwise it would hinder the types of activities anyone on the server could do, not just the Burning Blade crew. I'd also hazard a guess that you can do the Fort of the Damned with this too, since you can activate that when another world event happens. I'd be also interested to know if the Burning Blade can be Krakened or attacked by Megs, I'm thinking yes to both. The ship is also a work in progress, so looked a bit janky in the video, but it should have the triangular sails based on the art that they showed off to us. There's two blink and you miss it moments. The first is the Burning Blade's fifth cannon, and it's on the poop deck, right next to the helm. The Burning Blade also has four ladders, two in the middle of the ship and two on the balcony at the back of the ship. For those of you who are worried about balance, a crew of up to four players will have to defend four ladders instead of the usual two. Outside of this, I just wanted to talk about the actual event and my hope in terms of balance, along with alleviating some concerns about this. The initial world event part should be hard. No seriously, the OG Burning Blade was meant to be the fiercest ship on the waves and this should be even tougher. How do you really balance that? I think the biggest challenge with PvE in this game is how dumb the AI is. If you were around at launch, you'd know how accurate the skeletons were on island cannons and the initial cursed sails event. Now they seem to be programmed to hit a lot less. The Burning Blade's initial event should have more aggressive skeletons and accurate cannoneers compared to the regular ships, with it dialed back for smaller crews and ships. Conversely, a big problem I can see happening is the ship not being viable as a solo. Yes, you still have AI skeletons to assist you, but as we can see from the current ships they crew, they can steer, repair, shoot cannons and attack borders. These guys need to be shit hot to allow for solo players or even duos to even crew the ship. So when smaller crews capture the blade, the AI should be dialed up to assist them. Skeletons can't drop anchor or raise sails or lift masts that are down, so it is quite possible that Rare is adding these actions to them, hence them not repairing their ships in the latest builds. Something fucky is going on there with that AI. For those who are concerned about the ship being difficult to take down when in the hands of a player, we will also have to consider the ship will likely have to tussle with the rest of the server. This for me is an underrated design choice, since this will be the first incentive players have to work together against PvE since the Shrouded Deep and Hungering Deep before it. Don't forget, Season 12 will also add a bunch of new tools. Bone Callers will help create confusion on the Burning Blade and the Scatter Shot will be fantastic given the height of the Burning Blade meaning you'll constantly be hitting all the pellets. Rare has been pretty clever sandwiching the blade between two sandbox seasons, since a larger ship will have synergy with the content added in seasons 12 and 14, but they need to be aware that the balances to all this year's content need to come thick and fast. Another thing that intrigues me is the current story in the game. While Rare seems to be rushing the story along for the sake of tying up loose ends, their latest tweet seems to imply the Burning Blade will be made from the Burning Blade. While the flavour text is bogus and just contradicts what was said before, it's confirming the sword will be used to conjure up a memory of the Burning Blade. The problem is, Flameheart and the Reapers don't have the Burning Blade, it's firmly sat on the Pirate Lord's desk, so Rare has to somehow get that to change hands before August. It would be a nice time to have a surprise tall tale revealed at the Xbox Showcase, right? Would be nice. Rare also made a point of not showing Flameheart in that 2024 reveal trailer too. I think in reality, we'll get a CGI trailer showcasing Flameheart and him conjuring up the Burning Blade at the Xbox Showcase in June this year. We've seen Sea of Thieves every year there, and this year will probably be no different. It's a shame we're probably not getting anything gameplay-wise to show that shift of control. It's almost like this was meant to happen earlier, but has been rewritten. Lastly, I want to go over the potential this ship has. I can see it being a world event that's always being engaged with, because you get an upgrade when completing it. 
One of Sea of Thieves' biggest problem is that its content isn't really meant to be enjoyed long term, since commendations are the only form of extended progression and cosmetics are the only rewards. There is no real grind game, so to speak. It's great that every player has access to the same moves, skills and tools as you regardless of your level. That way, everyone is on the same footing and the Burning Blade stays within that design philosophy. If you want it, you just have to earn it each time. With that being said, I do hope something more is done with the ship model and it should be in the form of the Hourglass. Rare should make an Athena version of the ship such as the Black Witch or the Magpie's Wing and allow the two ships to match make for massive fights. Not only would this spice up Hourglass again, it would allow for some diversity in the mode and possibly make it more accessible for casual fans. Since the AI exists, it would be great for solo sloopers or hell, even allow up to 6 players on the ship just to have the larger crew size that everyone has wanted, but exclusive to Hourglass. Having this new ship is so exciting and I'm so glad Rare has managed to get it into the game. I'm optimistic the team will be able to get the balance right and support the content for years to come, expanding on what is already a massive addition. So yeah, that's all my thoughts in one big yappuccino. What about you? What do you want from the Burning Blade? Are you concerned about the balance? Please let me know down in the comments.